Hello everyone. I want you to take a look at these two shapes. Look at them closely. Now I want you to tell me which shape is a booba and which shape is a kiki. I'll give you a second. Got it? Did you guess that the more rounded shape is a booba and that the more pointy shape is a kiki? If you thought this way, you are like about 95% of people who take this test. But why does almost everybody guess the same way and what does it tell us about context and language? There have been a number of studies that have looked at this effect, but the most major study that has been done was one in 2001 by Ramachandran and Hubbard. In this study, they showed that 95% of both English and Tamil speakers associate this shape with booba and this shape with kiki without being prompted. That's right, they told the participants to label the shapes as either kiki or booba, and 95% answered this one kiki and this one booba. Other studies have shown that this is true for people as young as two and a half years old. But what does this tell us about language? Well, it tells us that perhaps, as language has evolved, that humans didn't necessarily name things at random, and, maybe, we named things based on the way they connected between the motor and sensory parts of our brain. When we say booba, we make a more round noise with our mouth, so we associate round things with booba. When we say kiki, there's a sharpness to the way our mouths make that noise, so we associate more pointy things with kiki. This has even been shown to be true neurologically. One fMRI study showed that when a participant heard and saw a shape that matched, like booba and the rounded shape, the brain showed more activity in the auditory cortex and visual cortex. However, when the participant had mismatching stimuli, like kiki and the rounded shape, the brain showed more activity in the prefrontal cortex. The auditory cortex and visual cortex are where our brains do more immediate processing, so the indication here is that the participant's brain had to do more work to make sense of the mismatching stimuli in the prefrontal cortex than the matching stimuli with the auditory cortex and visual cortex. Language is complicated and nobody has all the answers. This phenomenon isn't even unique to visual stimuli. You can see it with noises, tastes, and touch too. However, when these psychological patterns are recognized in science, you can't help but wonder how they got there and what they can tell us about who we are as humans. If you like this video, please check out my other video where I test our ability with the Booba Kiki test. Or tell your friends about it, since the test is probably already spoiled for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.